the vector. So you need to know that in your component form, when you see it, you will see that the first letter is called A, and the second letter is called B. And then secondly, you will see that the tangent of the angle that is formed is B over A. So if you find it, try to find this thing called the direction, the direction is talking about theta. So whenever you see this word, they're talking about the angle, otherwise known as theta. Kind of important, that angle, the one that we're talking about, is the one that makes um, with the positive x-axis. Meaning start at the x-axis, go counterclockwise like we normally do with our angles. Let's look at the first one. In the first one, if I were to draw a picture of this angle, what I would see is something that went 1, 2, 3 to the right, that's what the 3i means, and 1, 2, 3 up. Or in other words, this vector looks like this. So the angle that they're talking about is the angle that goes from the positive x axis to that vector, or in other words, that angle right there. And if I were completing a triangle, I could have the perpendicular to the x and the y axis. I know that each of those sides is 3, and that's why they're telling you that the tangent of your angle theta is 3 over 3. If you have the tangent of something and you're actually looking for the angle, you have to hit the tangent inverse. Very good, Taylor. Tangent inverse. So theta is the tangent inverse of 3 over 3. And you find out that that's 45 degrees. As I graph part B with the coordinate axis system, I have to go 3 to the left and 4 down. That's what negative 3i and 4j mean. So I put a dot down here. And I'm talking about this vector in its oh. standard unit vector format. That's what negative 3i, negative 4j means. Start at 0, 0, and go 3 to the left and 4 down. If I'm looking for my angle then, I always have to start at the x-axis in the positive direction and come around. Automatically, I know that when I find my answer, the number must be more than 180 and less than 270. For so those people who said it was in the third quadrant, you are the only ones who can be right. However, you may see surely why some of you got something in the first quadrant. So if I drop my triangle to the x-axis, and I see that my points over here are negative 3 and negative 4, that means that when I solve that triangle, I'm going to have the tangent of the angle, which is actually this <coughs> angle right here, bless you, is equal to negative 4 over negative 3. You find out when you take the inverse tangent that that angle is actually 53.13 degrees, I think. How many got that as their answer? Good job. That's called the... Complimentary. No, oh, it's like the opposite angle. No, no. It is cute. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't hear what Joe said. <laughs> now what you'll notice is that angle is 53 degrees, but that actually put us in the first quadrant. So you need to add 180 to that to get the answer. So if I add 180, because I have to be in the third quadrant, then the actual answer I'm looking for is 200 and 33.13 degrees, because I'm actually looking for the orange angle. So that's my final answer, 233 degrees, 0.13. Yeah. Okay. Stop talking. If I name the vector u in its component form, it would be 2 comma negative 3. And then what I could do is I could find its magnitude. So if I find the magnitude of that vector, um, the magnitude of u, 
would be the square root of 2 squared plus negative 3 squared. Or in other words, the square root of 4 plus 9, which is the square root of 13. So what I've done so far is I named the vector u, <coughs> which was over here on the right-hand side, in its component form. And then I found its length. If I wanted to, I could find that vector as a unit vector, meaning that its length, instead of being radical 13, would have a length of 1. How do I do that? So now I'm going to find the length, or sorry, the vector u as a unit vector, meaning I'm going to make its length 1 instead of radical 13. The way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to take that vector, 2, negative 3, and divide it by radical 13. So 2 divided by radical 13, comma, negative 3 divided by radical 13. This is a unit vector based off of the vector u, meaning that it goes in the same direction as u, but its length is only 1 now instead of radical 13. The reason that I did that is it makes it very easy for me to find a vector, a new vector, with a special length of 10. Because all I have to do now is take that 10 and multiply it by my current unit vector, which has a length of 1, and it'll give me a vector of length 10. So I just multiply this by 10, and I get 20 over radical 13, comma, negative 30 over radical 13. And of course, you would never leave it like that in our class, because you always have to have things in a simplified version. So I rationalize it, and I get 20 radical 13 over 13, comma, negative 30, radical 13, all over 13. And this is a unit vector in the direction, or sorry, not a unit vector, a vector in the direction of u with a length of 10.